let's get the camera out and give it a bit of a wiggle. So yeah, that is it now. <laughs> Hello, my name is John Dexter and welcome. Um, we're off to uh, a little village called Moore's Critchell today. Uh, and there is this line of trees down there, which is, uh, I don't know, I should have looked into the history of it actually. I don't know why they ever planted it, but um, it, it's quite beautiful. But I'm just wondering if I'm gonna be able to catch some autumn leaves there probably a little bit late now um, but yeah we're going to go down there today uh, which isn't very it's probably half an hour from where I live and see so if we can get some images uh, some ICM images um, I've said it before uh, that uh, you know trees are very difficult to um, photograph whether it be conventional or abstract um, but we'll give it a go and see what we can find um, it's uh, a love actually it was forecast today to be really thick fog and I was sort of thinking oh that'd be great yeah we can uh, go and do some woodland photography but <laughs> there wasn't any fog at all so they totally totally got that wrong uh, but never mind, we work, as with all ICM, we work with the light and the conditions we've got. So um, we're not far away from it now, so once we get there, we'll get out of the car, I'll show you what I've got to work with, and see what we can get. In a minute, I'll uh, just make me mic's fallen down. Hold on, let me pin it there. That's it. Uh, yeah, in a minute we'll get out and I'll show you this tree line um, and what we're going to shoot today. Um, trees and woodlands, I've said it before and I'll say it again, very difficult to photograph, even with ICM to be honest, um, because... You know, the only thing that really suits trees is a sort of vertical up and down. Um, it can get a bit sort of boring, but uh, anyway, we'll see what we can come up with. But I'm going to be shooting this today on my uh, new, well, it's not new, it's second hand, but new to me, um, Nikon uh, DF camera. Now, I don't need another camera because <laughs> I've got my D4, which I absolutely love and adore. Um, but I took my D4 into um, uh, a chap locally who um, he actually repairs Hasselblads. Um, so, but he does do all ca kinds of cameras. So he's um, really good at what he does um, and I took my D4 in to have the sensor clean and he was talking about what a beautiful sensor the D4 is um, and he said that um, you know it's the same sensor as he's got on his DF now I, I've got to be perfectly honest I hadn't actually heard of the Nikon DF um, and he was saying what a beautiful camera it is well he showed it to me and I just fell in love with it. It's this, um, it's got all the dials on top for your exposure compensation, your ISO, shutter speeds. And it's really sort of in um, the sort of style of the old film cameras. And that's what it was designed to be um, or to look, look like is the old film cameras. And I, I thought, you know, I came home and I thought I'm going to sort of read up on this and um, have a look at the reviews. And I'll tell you what, the reviews are so scathing of it. Um, 
it's it's what's called a marmite camera actually you either love it or you hate it and a lot of people were sort of saying in the reviews you know what a disaster it was and blah 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 it doesn't shoot video well pff, so what I, if you want to shoot video, get a video camera. <laughs> That's my feeling. I've never shot video on a on a camera anyway. Um, but uh, you know, the image quality is absolutely superb for the simple reason it is the D4 sensor. Anyway, as I say, I sort of fell in love with it, and I found him up. Um, well, actually, I, I looked online for some second-hand ones, and I'll tell you what, they don't exist. There was none on eBay, um, and you can't buy them new anymore. Um, I think they've sort of discontinued them now. Um, so to get hold of one was, was quite hard. Anyway, I phoned him up, and I said I loved it. And he said, well, I've actually got two. He said, you know, if you're really interested, um, I might consider sort of selling one of them, um, which was so tempting. Um, and I thought, oh, God, do I really need another camera? Um, but as I say, I fell in love with it and I bought it. And I've been using it for a couple of weeks now. And it... it because I, I was sort of bought up on film, um, it sort of takes me back to those days. And um, it, it's a beautiful camera. I love it. I, I mean, the main reason I bought it is the DF I love, but it's such a big, um, bulky camera um, that sometimes when you're going on a hike, you don't want to sort of lug it around. And I thought, well, this is a fairly small body. It might be absolutely ideal, you know, if I'm sort of going somewhere where I don't want to sort of lumber the D4 around. So, yeah, that's um, that's my new camera. A um, lot of people hate them, um, but I absolutely love it. And the image quality of it is, is as you would expect from a D4 sensor, absolutely superb. Anyway... Enough of this about this camera. We're going to get out now and have a look at this tree line. And we're going to get a couple of shots. The the only, as I said before, I think the only sort of movement is a vertical up and down. Probably with a little wiggle at the same time. But we'll have a look. Uh, we've got some nice autumn colours. Um, I think, actually, I, th I think I've sort of missed the best of it. But there's still a few of the trees with the autumn colours on which would be nice. So yeah, enough of this. Let's get out and uh, do some shooting. Okay, I've uh, got my ND uh, six stop filter on here. I'm gonna be taking this in aperture priority as always, um, because I use the aperture purely to control my shutter speed so I'm going to be listening to how much um, time I have on the shutter I'm going to focus about one third into the composition as you would with conventional photography and I think I'm going to be shooting at the top end of this lens, which is 35mm, because it's a 17 to 35 lens. And let's have a look. I'm on f8 at the moment. Actually, that's, that sounds about right. Um, so a little vertical movement. And I'm going to be... Um, I hope you can see me here. <laughs> um, yeah, giving it a little vertical movement with a little wiggle. Um, not looking too bad. Actually, I'm getting a blown out highlights in the sky because I've got quite a wide dynamic range here. Um, so this is the thing with ICM. 
it's always worth checking for your highlights because with you moving the camera into the sky or whatever you can get blown out high, blown bleh, I can't talk blown out highlights so keep an eye on that so I'm going to dial in minus one stop which has cured my highlights but the shutter speeds a little bit on the far side so I'm going to close it up to let's try f10 no f11 yeah that's perfect check my histogram which all looks good got a nice bit of color in the trees here I think I've missed the best of it but uh, <clears throat> still got a little bit here um, this is actually why and correct me if I'm wrong but mirrorless cameras you don't get a shutter um, noise is that correct um, it's silent which would make me using a mirrorless camera for um, ICM a little bit difficult because as I say I do listen to the length of time that the shutter is open um, to move over I don't want to get run over so using a mirrorless camera if you haven't got that shutter um, noise um, I'm not saying it's impossible but it, it would just make it a little bit more difficult because rather than listening to it you'd you just have to keep an eye on your shutter speed so um, that's probably why I will never go over to mirrorless Just let this uh, truck go past. And get a few more shots. On F11, which is actually giving me about a sixteenth of a second, which is just about right I got an ISO of base rate of a hundred which I don't think I ever come off to be honest with you That's uh, not looking too shabby. Just a few more. Yeah, I think that'll do me. Okay, uh, I'm pretty much home now. Um, don't know whether I've got anything or not. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Um, if I have... I'll put them up at the end of this video, um, see what I can do with them. Yeah, um, I, I was actually just lately I, I've um, been deviating a little bit off um, ICM. Um, why? Don't know really. I was sort of getting a little bit stale with it, sort of finding new compositions, new ideas really. Um, so I've sort of been going back a little bit uh, to sort of not conventional photography because I love abstract and I don't think I would ever deviate from that. Um, but rather than intentional camera movement, I've sort of been going to sort of static photography if you like but still um, uh, still abstract um, so yeah I, I'm really enjoying that and actually uh, it's sort of given me more inspiration uh, for ideas and so on so it always sometimes pays to sort of deviate from your sort of usual um, workflow if you like to sort of boost that enthusiasm um, so much so that when I got really into ICM, I actually sold my uh, tripod 
because I never used it and I thought, you know, what's the point in keeping it? So I've actually had to go back and buy another tripod. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, typical of me, I love my um, old gear, uh, old lenses, old cameras, like the DF I was talking to you about, that was actually bought out in 2014, I think it was. So yeah, that's... Um, Old and, and uh, I've bought an uh, an old um, Gitzo tripod. Actually, it's the old aluminium one rather than the um, uh, carbon fibre, which they all are now. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I had to buy another tripod. So I suppose the moral of this story is: don't ever get rid of your gear because you never know if you'll need it. So yeah. Anyway, um, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for coming along with me. Um, and until the next time, this is John Dexter saying bye for now.